tonight on this lovely fall afternoon. Hopefully y'all had a great, great day. Um, Brother Enos, do you know how to turn off the fans? Just uh, just turn them one click either way and they'll, they should shut off. Turn them to the right, go clockwise until they stop and they should shut off. There you go. I uh, forgot that they were on. I was just trying to stir some air. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. It's going down. Perfect. Thank you. Amen. All right, let's grab our hymn books and go to number 171. We're in the Red Song book on Wednesday night. Number 171, let's all stand and we'll sing this song together. Jesus is coming soon, M maybe or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. Number 171, we'll sing all three verses. Trouble sometimes are here, filling men's heart with fear. Freedom we all hold dear. Now is that stay? Humbling heart to God, save from the chase near on. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians away. soon be on happy forevermore when we meet on that shore free from all care rising up in the sky telling the world goodbye homeward we then will fly glory to share Jesus is coming for that. Well, let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll continue singing. Brother Tony, would you mind opening us up in prayer, please? Amen. You may be seated. Let's go to number 180. It's different now. It's different now. We'll sing the first, and second, and fourth verse. 180. 180. It's different now. Once I was lost in sin, I had no peace within, to save my weary soul I knew not how. But Jesus came to me, and by his grace I'm free, now it's different, oh so different now, it's different now, so save my soul, it's different now. 
Oh, Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. We'll get our timing. All right, let's do on the second verse. Hun, how are you doing the um the uh, chorus? How are you holding that? Just following my lead. All right, follow my lead on the second verse. Here we go. All right, that was a little rough there, but that's why I like going through these songs because we get, get that old time country singing. Amen. Number verse two. Here we go. I went to church one day to hear them sing and pray. The preacher firmly found the gospel flawed. He said, You must repent. So down the aisle I went. Now it's different. Oh, so different now it's different now since jesus saved my soul it's different now since by his blood i'm whole old satan had to flee when jesus rescued me now it's different oh so different now fourth and now my hopes are bright i praise him day and night how he could chase me so i know not how but praise the lord it's done the victory now is won now it's different oh so different now it's different now since jesus saved my soul it's different now since by his blood i'm whole oh satan had to flee when jesus rescued me now it's different oh so different now amen amen you remember what life was like before you got saved aren't you glad you're saved Pray for uh, the, the bunnies. Mrs. Bunny is uh, not sick. She is out of town. So uh, just be in prayer for them as they are traveling. And uh, pray for the Ramseys. Um, I believe they will be heading back uh, between now and, and uh, Sunday. And uh, been seeing that they have, have, been, have been having a great time um, over in uh, the uh, Utah area at the parks over there. So praise the Lord for that. Just be in prayer for them. So if you could just uh, mention... Put that on your prayer list to pray for traveling mercies and uh, um, be in prayer for um, Brother Donovan Berkey Pyle. Um, be in prayer for Brother Donovan Berkey Pyle, and uh, he's at the U of M Hospital, and uh, um, so just continue to be in prayer for him. Um, also, Mrs. Toller has been asking uh, that we pray for her health and, and unspoken, and uh, Brother Tompkins has that surgery coming up and about couple weeks man all right so uh we'll continue in prayer for that um pray for elena torres pray for the torres family uh we visited them on saturday and they seem to be recuperating very well and uh doing doing fine and uh so uh, we'll hopefully see them very very soon but they're just being very cautious so trying to be uh considerate also, um, be in prayer for Miss uh, Heidi Witt. That's Miss uh, Bunny's niece, and uh, she's got some health issues. Be in prayer for Mrs. Robinette and her health, and also Brother Robinette and his health. And uh, so just uh, remember them in your prayers, okay? So um, um, the only announcement we had was for the ladies, uh, the ladies um, uh, foster club soul winning time. Uh, that would be tomorrow at 1.30, Thursday. And uh, they would meet at one, you would meet at 1.30 at Car Park on the west side of Manchester and then uh, go out for about an hour and then meet again at Frank's Place in downtown Manchester. So if, if uh, ladies, um, if, uh, if you need to communicate, just communicate with my wife as far as uh, whether uh, you can make it or if it's just for the, the fellowship time afterwards, just uh, stay in communication with her. That way uh, she knows um, who to expect and that would be be great okay let's go to our prayer time um, at this time and uh, if anybody has a prayer request uh, yes ma'am mrs. Tompkins okay. Okay. all right um, Joel Joel and his girlfriend Sarah 
both tested positive for COVID, so be in prayer for them. And uh, and, uh, we'll be praying for them. All right, anybody else have a prayer request that they'd like to give me, Mr. Toller? How many of y'all are familiar with this land situation with Brother Ashcraft? When we went to language school, we were at Brother Ashcraft's, and they had a beautiful piece of property, and um, you know, a, a large piece of property that his dad had purchased for the church. And then I think in Mexico, um, the law says that you can't have it in a uh, business's name because then it becomes part of the government. It becomes state property. So he had to do it in a person's name. And um, so he did it in his dad's name. Well, um, you know, it, he became the pastor. Brother Tommy Ashcraft became the pastor there and uh, continued working with it. Well, one of his um, family members uh, wanted their portion of the land. And so they legally took that portion, which was being used for the church and for the properties. Brother Ashcraft had maybe a... 1500 square foot house maybe a thousand square foot house it was not anything luxurious but it was there on property and um well this this they this family member of his uh, actually won the case and uh so the church had to they lost a bunch of pieces of land right around the church and so this has been about what do you think about four or five years it's been going on something like that four or five years this has been going on and they're trying to recoup this to, to give it back to the church because uh, when we were there um, they've also got a new uh, uh, mass a uh, wonderful uh, church building there probably I'd say a thousand seat auditorium and that's kind of unheard of in Mexico uh, they were when we were there they they had a um, probably 400 to 500 uh, seat auditorium and um, this really helped them with the when they got the new building so it's just been a battle um, it's just been uncalled for um, the, the family member is saved um, and it's just you just scratch your head as far as the motivation and, and why why so if you would just be in prayer for that that's kind of a synopsis of, uh, of that so special place. If you ever have a chance to go see Me- go go to Mexico and go to Monterey, uh, you ought to go see what, what, what they're doing there. It's it's exciting. It's exciting. Brother Tony, I know you'd love it. Uh, you'd, you'd, uh, I mean, you meet some very kindred spirits there, so that'd be great. All right, so just be in prayer for, for this hearing that the Lord would uh, intervene, and uh, this is God's property. So. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, yes. Um, over in Burn, Indiana, some years ago, there was a pastor named um, Brother Combest, and uh, his he he is now down in Texas, and his children are now getting married and starting their own family. There was one of his sons called Josh Combest, and uh, Josh Combest is he's probably twenty five, under thirty years old, definitely. And he has been battling with some sickness, um, and it's it's just not looking good. So if we could just lift him up in your prayers, he's he's a young he's he's is he married? He's married, right? He's got two little girls. That's what I thought. And um, so if we could just uh, lift him up in in prayer, um, Josh Combest is his name, and Combest is like comb with the est, like you comb your hair with the est. So Combest. Is um, how you spell his name, and uh, they got a they got a great family, um, um, great siblings, great family. Uh, really love the Lord and very, very um, just live their life uh, close to the Bible. So, um, if you would just pray for him, okay. Pray for Brother Moog. 
Brother Moog's not feeling 100% tonight, so just be in prayer for him. Be in prayer for we miss him. As uh, miss it when people can't make it. Uh, anybody else have something they want to mention? Don't scratch your head. Okay, so Miss Toller has two unspoken. When I was growing up, um, we would usually, in the spring and fall, have a give it all drive that uh, Pastor Gray would do um, to help pay off the pay down the debt of the of the church, and uh, or or to do improvements, capital improvements there on the property, and uh, he would give commitment cards and and uh, he would uh, say, you know, how many want to do a thousand? And how many want to do a thousand? I said, don't scratch your head. I'll give you a card. You'll be committed. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I, I see somebody move their hand. And it's like, I'm just glad it's not for anything financial. So, <laughs> so amen. So, Miss Toller is asking for two, um, prayer for two unspoken. All right. Anybody else? Okay, any praises that you'd like to share? Any praises? Yes, ma'am. Good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Miss Tompkins is praising the Lord for the new teller that they got. So, amen. Helps relieve that load. I know it's been stressful for you. Amen. Anybody else have something they want to praise the Lord? Miss England. Amen. Amen. Mrs. England is praising the Lord that she's able to decrease her insulin. And uh, my dad, he had diabetes. And uh, um, my sister was brave enough to help give him his shots of insulin. He was like 10 at the time. And, uh, and one time he, he let me do it. And I was just like, I, I, was, I was eight at the time. So They've really come a long way. They've really come a long way. Yeah. And then I've told you about the dialysis things, uh, you know, four hours of dialysis, three kids in a hospital waiting room with nothing on the wall and two channels to watch on TV. Turn channel. Not fun. Not fun. Anyway, so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're getting down. Anybody else have something they want to praise the Lord about? No? Okay. All right. So uh, let's uh, take a few minutes and uh, with our, our spouse, Deanna, how about you pray for, with Mrs. Moog? She seems lonely over there. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll pray with you, Brother Tony, and uh, Mrs. Melissa will play a hymn softly, and uh, we'll pray over these requests. <laughs>
thank you and praise your Lord that you have given us a chance to come to church and to lift up our request to you. Lord, uh, we love you. We love you. Thank you so much for our church family. Lord, I ask that you'd please, that you'd bring your kingdom soon. That you would just take us out of this corrupt, sinful world that's cursed with sickness and sin. I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, tonight to gather around your word and learn something from your word that would help us to be better Christians, that would help us to have a better influence. For Jesus' sake, Lord, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I was uh, reminiscing some of my time down in in uh, Mexico with uh, Brother Ashcraft, and um, they would have their services on Thursday night versus Wednesday night. And as a as a college group, I would go out with the college guys, and they would um, preach on the city buses. And they, their church is located about 20 minutes south of Monterey. So when you say they're in Monterey, they're actually south of Monterey, but that's the closest town. And there's about 5 million uh, people who live in Monterey. It's a free-for-all as far as for soul winning. Uh, they've got some great places. And we would go on Wednesday nights, and we would get up on the, um, the, the city buses and uh, preach, preach gospel messages. So I'm, you know, one of the college guys, Jaime, was his name, and he asked me, he invited me, and said, hey, come, come be my partner. So first week, I just, I just, you know, was a shadow. I was in the back. Second week, he gets up there, and, um, and uh, he preaches on the first bus, and then the second bus, he says, you're preaching this time. Like, I've only been here two weeks. <laughs> uh, so uh, the Lord, uh, you know, used, used that time, but the group um, of college, college guys, um, on a on a Wednesday night, you know, we're talking about probably uh, twenty to thirty. I'd say about twenty guys. Uh, we would go together, and uh, would see anywhere between two to three hundred. Uh, that that w on the city buses, we would give us gospel presentation. We would pray. We would uh, uh, inquire if anybody responded. And some people there on the city bus, they would raise their hand right. You know, right in, you know, stand, standing there holding, and they would go like, yeah, I did, or, you know, they would respond, and it was just a, a wonderful thing to see, um, you know, how many countless thousands of, of people got, at least preached the gospel to, and they got a clear presentation, and, uh, and to be a part of that, and then the, the, the Saturday soul winning, they had uh, probably 15 to 20 routes that would go and bring hundreds and hundreds of people and um, you know just just winning lots of souls and I know the church would see probably 300 if not a little bit more per week saved um, through all of their ministries and all of their their efforts and uh, and then to hear this go on with them and uh, the, the Satan just trying to, to hamper that they've got a graduate they've got a, a, a college graduate in all 36 states of Mexico and even foreign countries. So uh, they've been doing this, uh, the Lord's work, heaven's work, and doing a great job. So uh, just remember him in prayer tomorrow. So amen. All right, let's grab our hymn books and let's go to number 176, Red Songbook, number 176, Let the Lower Lights Be Burning. We'll sing all three verses of number 176, Let the Lower Lights Be Burning. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from His lighthouse evermore. But to us He gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Dark the night of sin has settled, loud the angry billows soar. Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across 
across the waves. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. Trim your feeble lamb, my brother, some poor sailor tempest-tossed, trying now to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the waves. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. I remember uh, when my nurse practitioner finally talked me into injecting insulin. She did a little happy dance. <laughs> she was really excited. <laughs> I wasn't so excited. I've never, you know, doing that needle thing, you know, it's just something I never thought I'd do. There it is. I can't imagine being a 10-year-old doing it. For <laughs> I can't, I'm not sure I'd want a 10-year-old <laughs> near me with a needle. <laughs> I remember uh, when I was the third grade, we lived in Goshen, Indiana. My dad had a, all these medical stories inspired me. Uh, had a boil, a big old nasty purple boil on his back. And for some reason, my brother and I were in the office with my mother while he had that thing lanced. Never heard a man scream so loudly. <laughs> it was an unpleasant experience for us all. <laughs> it was traumatizing. Yeah. Um, and I do appreciate you all that have been praying for me, especially on the rehab question. Uh, I mean, the surgery thing is, you know, I've, I've had several surgeries throughout my life. So, no, but it's, uh, it's all that. And I know you're praying for me, and I. I really appreciate it. Uh, tonight's letter is from uh, Carlos and Jamie Donate, uh, Independent Baptist Missionaries to Guatemala since 1991. And this is the August prayer letter. Dear friends, Romans 8, 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul was familiar with pain all throughout his ministry. This verse really ministered to my heart this month, which despite being filled with heartbreak and sorrow, it was also filled with hope and healing. We had the loss of several of our church folks, folk, neighbors, and friends. It made us ever so conscious of the fact that our lives are but a vapor, which appears for a while, then vanishes just like James 4.14 reminds us. Thus we must, be, thus we must then be busy about the work which he has called us to do. Amen. Praising the Lord for 18 souls saved and seven baptisms this past month. Our Children's Saturday Bible Club ministry is doing tremendously with a weekly average of about 25. Jamie uh, has had her hands full preparing lessons for the uh, teachers and workers. Our youth ministry reopened after about a year of not being able to due to the restrictions. Pray for such an important outreach. The young people must have a way to come and receive the word of God on a regular basis. Our deaf ministry continues on with its weekly virtual meetings. We averaged a slight increase in attendance this past month for which we are grateful. Yesterday, I saw two of my deaf men at a local grocery store which had just hired them. They told me how much they appreciate the weekly Bible class but wished we would once again have it in-person meetings. Please pray that we could once again do this, knowing that God is able to open those doors. Our naturopathic and holistic medical ministry is going well. We see folks each and every week for diverse reasons, including COVID. Pray as we minister and care for folk, many whom are our very own church people. Pray for a new pastor for Mount Zion Baptist Mission in Palencia. The former pastor resigned this past month, and we are hoping that God will send a new one. The work is completely suspended. Lastly, pray we could finish raising funds so we can buy whole Spanish Bibles, $1,200 lacking. Thank God for those of you who have given. 
We are expecting to visit the police academy this month if they approve our requests so we can preach the gospel to them and hand them a copy of the Holy Scriptures. September is Patriotic Month in Guatemala, and nothing more patriotic than to preach the gospel to all civil ser servants. That's our goal for souls. Carlos. And Galatians 6, 17. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for the Donates that have been uh, serving uh, s for, since 1991. I pray that they'll be able to continue their ministry for many, many more years, continue to bless them. We thank you for our ministry. Pray that we bless it tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm uh, going to just review just a tad bit of what um, we were talking about, about examples of initiative. But for the time's sake, I am going to, we're going to skip the, uh, the, the, um, the lengthy review that we do. We will, let's go ahead and review our, in our lesson, the, uh, we'll say a couple times the definition and then the, the verse, but then we will get right into uh, Hebrews chapter 12. All right, so if you have your lesson, go ahead and, and uh, turn to the front page, and we will say the definition and the verse. We'll do it uh, two times, and then we'll go to Hebrews chapter 12. All right, so here we go. Initiative, ready? Recognizing and doing what needs to be done before I am asked to do it, Romans 12, 21 be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Again, initiative, recognizing and doing what needs to be done before I am asked to do it. Revel Romans 12, 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And we talked about the whistling swan and how that whenever they fly in formation, they fly in that V formation and, and uh, uh, just... I saw how that the, the, the person in the front is breaking the wind, um, breaking the, the airspace for all those who are flying behind him and making it easier. And as a team, as a group, they were able to travel 70% 70, tra 70 further than if they had traveled on their own. And then, uh, so that was, that was pretty interesting how that it was, took one person to, to, to lead out and to, to, to break the, the airspace and to break up the, the, the wind there and be able to, to help everybody else. And we talked about some examples in the Bible. We talked about David and, and how he was, uh, uh, showed some initiative in going forward and, and fighting Goliath. Somebody had to go out and Goliath was trying to, to, to get Saul uh, Israel's champion, supposedly, to, to go out and fight. But Saul, he was in his tent, and he was, uh, if you study the life of Saul, it was only whenever the crowd was behind him that, that he was able to have that courage, and he had to have the, the group behind him. He couldn't do it alone, though. But David, he had, he had been uh, uh, fighting bears and fighting lions with the sheep, and so he's like, hey, I'll, hey this, this guy's just another big old grown, grown, uh, overgrown bear, and I will take care of him, God, God and I. He talked about uh, Abigail. Abigail, her family was, uh, was about to be destroyed by David because of uh, Nabal, her, 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 in, her insolent husband's uh, response to him. And uh, Abigail, she, she stepped up and she, she uh, showed some initiative and begged for uh, David's mercy and, and provided for his, his, uh, his men and, and helped save her, her family. The only person that died of her family was Nabal the one who uh, caused, the, caused the, the, the situation. We talked about Naaman's maid, the one that was, uh, that was uh, abducted from Israel and worked for Naaman and his wife. And uh, she showed some initiative by giving some good advice for somebody who had actually done her some wrong and, and uh, by, by stealing her from her family, but she still repaid them kindness. We talked about Esther's initiative, how that, that uh, when, when it was all said and done between her and Mordecai, she, she said, well... I, I, I'm going to have to go and talk to the king, even though I've not been requested. And she said, if I perish, I perish. And she, but she put her life on the line, and, and she knew that this needed to be done. I have to put my, I have to put my life out on the line, and I have to, to, to do it for my people. And she did it, and God spared her. We also see Peter's initiative, how that whenever he saw that these 13 groups of people came into to Jerusalem um, all, from all around the Mediterranean area at the day of Pentecost, that week of Pentecost, that, um, that uh, he, he, he saw the opportunity to spread the gospel and, and he was stirred to preach on that day. Then we saw Barnabas in Acts 11, how that he, you know, after 
Paul got saved. Uh, he, he tried to assimilate with the church of Jerusalem. You can, you can tell there was kind of some angst there and some nervousness with the people. And uh, that probably affected his spirit. So he just went home to Tarsus. And then later on, Barnabas, he was sent to Antioch, which was near Tarsus. And so while he's at Antioch, he goes over to Tarsus and he reaches out to Paul and, and, and encourages him to get back in church. And, to, to, and it, our lives are changed because of that move by, by Barnabas. Because uh, had it not been for Barnabas encouraging Paul to get back in church and, and, or at least to, to, to join him in Antioch, then uh, we, we probably would not have the gospel. And then we talked about in Hebrews chapter 12, let's read there, Hebrews chapter 12, we talked about Jesus and the initiative that he saw, that, that he possessed, all right? So let's read in verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God, of uh, the throne of God. It says that Jesus was the author. If you go to, uh, don't turn to it, but I, I believe it's in Acts chapter 2. It talks, I, I believe it's Peter when he's preaching the, the day of Pentecost. He mentions about the foreknowledge of God. And he talks about how they, the, in the foreknowledge of God, the, the, he, that God knew that the, the leaders of Israel would crucify the Holy One. And this would all happen. And, and then we look at Hebrews chapter 12. Who wrote the plan of his own sacrifice and his own giving of himself? Jesus wrote that plan. He was the author of the salvation plan. And that's why the Father is going to honor him someday because he was willing to lay down his life for, for, his, for the creation to bring them back to the Father. Amen? So... Um, some great examples of initiative in the Bible. Let's go to the, to the lesson, and we'll talk about people with initiative, all right? People with initiative, let's see how it applies personally. Now, some of these things, they will, they will apply to young people, but some of them will also apply to us, and, and may uh, the Lord uh, uh, move on our hearts and, and show us what we can do, how we can be that person with initiative and, uh, and honor and glorify Him. So people with initiative, number one, find ways to relieve pressure. Find ways to relieve pressure or weight off of those around them. They're 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 looking around and and they're they're observant. They're they're conscientious of what's going on around and and they just got that that servant's heart. If I could, uh, you know, that's one one quality of a person with initiative. They just have a servant's heart and they're willing, just want to help. Number two, people with initiative study the lives of those that go before them. They study the lives of those that go before them. They, are, they look at uh, uh, those who have gone before and they try to emulate the good qualities of those people and they try to learn from them and they, they want to copy those qualities. Number three, they study successful people. They recognize success. They look at the product uh, of those people's, people's lives and they want to emulate those things. That's a person with initiative, somebody who wants to be successful, who has a servant's heart. They study other successful people. Number four, they copy good examples. The definition of initiative is they recognize and do. It's not just recognize. A lot of people can recognize, but they, 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 they just don't want to get, off, uh, get up and, and, and do anything. But these people with, with initiative, they copy good examples. They do. They, they not only study successful people and, and gain the knowledge, but then they put it to action. Number five, they become balanced leaders. They become balanced leaders. People with initiative become balanced leaders because mentally, uh, when they're a follower, you know, you, not everybody in an organization can be the leader. You have to have some followers. Not every, uh, not every flock, you know, there's, you know, in a flock, you have a pecking order. In a, in a, in a uh, you know, a chicken yard, you have a pecking order. In a, you know, in, in the, the sheep flock, you have a, a budding order, what they call it. And, uh, you know, there's a certain, uh, um, you know, levels that, that each sheep has. But, uh, but as, a, as a follower, whenever you don't have the leadership role, whenever... You know, you're, you're, you're under somebody's authority. Like many, many years I was under Pastor Ortiz's authority. But, but, but mentally, my mind, my heart, I, w I wanted to be in tune with him. I didn't, I didn't ever want to cause any harm to the ministry that God had called him to do. 
he, God had called him to do, do, do a great ministry, and, and he was traveling many, uh, many times every week of the world, and sometimes internationally, and I wanted him to know that whenever he was gone, that the church was going to be just the same. I wasn't going to try to do anything. I was going to try to try to help the people as if he was there. He was the pastor. And, and, and uh, my, my prayer was that one day the Lord would open up an opportunity for me to be a pastor. And I wanted to be a balanced leader. And I wanted to, to sow that t in tunement with my pastor. And then hopefully the Lord would give me some folks who are also in tune with that. The people with initiative become balanced, balanced leaders. All right, number six are pioneers. People with initiative are pioneers. They initiate the task and blaze the trails. They're like that, that, lead, that lead swan who, who flies out and, 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 and breaks the trail for everybody behind them. That's a person with initiative. Number, number seven, they help those who are following after them travel farther than they, could, than they could have had they traveled by themselves. They help those who are following after them travel farther than they could have had they traveled by themselves. 70% farther when, when a, a flock of, uh, of swans or geese, when they fly together, they help each other travel farther. That's what a person with initiative does. It's not all about them getting the glory. It's, hey, you know, we're a team. And, and that's, that's one thing that, 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 I, that I love, you know, about what Jesus told Peter. He said, do you love me? Lovest thou me more than these? Love, feed my sheep. Lovest thou me more than sheep? My, 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 than these? Feed the sheep. And, and so what he was trying to do is, is, is encourage Peter, be a, be a, be a shepherd. Be a shepherd. It's not, about, it's not about driving the flock to the destination. It's about leading the flock. Let's get there together as, as a team. We'll get there one step at a time. I love what Jacob said to Esau when they met. And, and Esau said, all excited. He says, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. And Jacob says, hey, listen, you know, if I overdrive the flock in a day, they're going to die. I'll just lead on softly. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. We're heading there that, that direction, and we'll get there when we get there. But, uh, but we're going to all get there together and in good health. And uh, that's, that's, a great, that's a great motto is, is that, that you know, that's, that's a person with initiative. If so, somebody who, who knows what needs to be done and, and he's doing it. And, uh, and that's like, like number seven. They help those who are following them travel farther than if they had traveled by themselves. Number eight, minimize, they minimize air resistance. Resistance is pushback. They minimize air resistance for those following behind them. If you're if you're uh, in the lead, in a followership position and you've got that initiative in your heart and 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 you 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 see that your your leader uh, he he needs uh, you know somebody like minded and and you're trying to and, and he needs more people and that person with initiative is is saying hey to the group hey let's get behind our leader hey let's let's go forward hey let's let, let's let's do this as a team let's let's support them and that's what a person with initiative does they minimize errors they min, minimize the resistance or the pushback or they minimize the 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 the, the there's going to be some drag you know when you're when you're flying there's going to be some drag you know the molecules of air you've got to cut through them and so that person with, with initiative, he helps to minimize it. Number, number nine, they still flap their wings behind their leaders. They still flap their wings behind their leaders. They do not just glide. They fly in formation with them. They realize that they are flying easier because of those flying out in front of them and others are flying easier because of the, their updraft behind them. And they realize, do not break the chain. Do not break the chain. So they flap their wings behind their leader. They don't have to be the one out front. They can, they, they can, they can be in the shadows, and they, they just they flap their wings in support, and they say, hey, we're doing this together. We're going to do this as a team. Number 10, they are preparing today to lead tomorrow. They are preparing today to lead tomorrow. People with initiative, they are preparing today to lead tomorrow. Young people... It's so important for you to, to have that initiative and, and to, to have that servant's heart because one day 
one day you're going to have a flock of your own. One day you're going to have a home of your own. One day you may have a class of your own or a church of your own or, or some area where you're going you're gonna to have to be cutting the trail. You're going to be the, the, the pioneer. You're going to be one place on the trail. And boy, it's going to be a lot easier if you've got some people who are, who are with you on it. And, and the Bible does say you reap what you sow. And so uh, sow today that good seed of initiative. Uh, but uh, number 10, they're preparing today to lead tomorrow. Number 11, they're building up strength. They are building up strength and getting trained for when it is their time to lead so that they will be a, be a strong leader. And so those flying behind them will reach even greater heights because of then. I'll, I'll read that again. They are building up strength and getting trained for when it is their time to lead so that they will be a strong leader. And so those lying behind them will reach even greater heights because of them. Jesus said to the disciples, and greater works than thee shall you do. Jesus fully expected, he was the pioneer, he was the one that was leading the formation, and he had fully expected his disciples to see more people saved and baptized and more impact in the world than whatever he could have done. And, and the Bible says he went about doing good. The Bible says that he, he was just going everywhere and, and just 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 touching lives and, and healing people and constantly busy and wearing himself out as a human. But he said to, he expected his disciples greater works than these shall you do. So he was, he was wanting his followers, whenever it was time for him to go, he wanted his followers to do, go to reach greater heights. Number 12, have and keep their minds sharp. People with initiative have and keep their minds sharp. Sadly, sadly, the, the mentality of today, uh, of, of the common worker of today, they're, they're, they're obviously there are some cream that rises to the top, but the common worker of today, you know, if, if, they're not, if the limelight's not on them, they're not performing. They're going to sit back and relax, and they're just going to be lazy, and they're, you know, hey, I'm just going to here get my paycheck. I just want to survive. I just want to clock in, clock out, but, but I... I but a person with initiative, they've got that fire in their heart. They, have, they, they want to keep their, their learning. They're, they're trying to be the best that they can be. They're scanning. They're recognizing. The, it's because it comes from within them. It's not because of the glory. Oh, my goodness, the lights are on. Let me, let me perform. No, it's just something that's within them. Number 13, they keep their eyes attentive to what is happening around them. People with initiative keep their eyes attentive to what is happening around them. Truly, in the depths of their heart, there's a servant's heart. They, they want to help. They, they, they want to take the load off of those around them. They, they want to they wanna be a good team player, and that's, that's what they do. They keep their eyes attentive to what is happening around them. Number 14, I, how many times did I hear, hear this in high school? Observe and anticipate. Observe and anticipate. They are looking for something to do. They are looking for something to do. People with initiative, they, they, they just, it's, it's almost like they're, they're attention deficit. They've just got to point me in a direction. You know, I've got some fire in me. I, you know, point me in the right direction. But uh, they're looking for something to do. Number 15, they know how to have fun. They know how to have fun. But more importantly, they know when it is when to be serious. They are well balanced. They know how to have fun. Because, you know, uh, what is the definition? Recognizing and doing what needs to be done before I'm asked to do it. You know, there needs to be some fun time too. I mean, it's not a concentration camp. Yeah. No, it, it, there needs to be some fun time. So, but they know how to switch gears when it's time to get serious. They know how to switch channels, switch gears, and say, you know, all right, it's time to get it's time to get serious about what we need to do. All right, let's get her done, and then and then we'll go back to having some fun. Number sixteen, they love and enjoy work and accomplishing things. They're not lazy. Remember, they recognize which in you, involves using their eyes and mind, and do. So they recognize and do, and that involves them getting sweaty and dirty if need be. What needs to be done before they're asked to do it? It's recognize and do. That's a person with initiative. It's not just recognizing. It's stepping out there and saying, I'll, I'll help. Or if I've got to get this thing, start this thing on my own, then, then, then let's do it. So it's recognizing and doing both pieces. Number 17, they possess the character quality of dependability dependability because they are willing to make the necessary sacrifices to properly complete a job 
They possess the character quality of dependability. Number 18, they possess the character quality of obedience. They possess the character quality of obedience. Remember, there was in the lesson of obedience, there was different ways to obey. You could obey as a slave or obey as a servant or obey as an honor. And that's how they obey. They obey as an honor. See, a person with initiative, they, have, they, they are mentally plugged in. They are mentally plugged in. Am I going too fast? Hopefully I'm not. They're mentally plugged in to their leaders, to their leader's spirit. They, 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 they recognize that God has given them this person and they submit under their authority and their whole heart's desire is, I want to help this person meet God's, uh, uh, meet God's will or fulfill God's will for their life. And so they, they, they want to obey as an honor. They, they recognize, hey, I can do this. The, the, uh, my leader, they need uh, some help over here. Hey, hey leader, can I, can I go help over here? Or can I help over here? And, they, and they're jumping into it. And it's obedience. They obey as an honor. Number 19, they can be trusted to work alone. They can be trusted to work alone because they will actually work they do not need someone standing over them, threatening to beat them over the head for them to produce a first-class job. And that's the sad state of many of our workers today, the character of, of even our countrymen. It's, it's just a shame. It's a shame they cannot be trusted to, to work alone because there's no fire within their bones. There's no striving for excellence. Whatever happened to, to striving for excellence and, and, and being able to look back at the job that you did and say, I like what I did. I did a good job, and I'm not bragging on myself, but that looks good. Yeah. That looks good. Um, I'm, not, I'm not gloating, but in my office, you'll notice on some bookshelves, you'll, you'll see those quiet time journals. And when I was putting them together, I, I poured over it for hours on end, hours on end. I didn't have anybody to proof, so I had to, I had to sometimes step away and go back to it to... Sometimes you just get this blasé, um, blurry look at the page, and, and you can't notice any, any mess-ups or anything. And so, but it took hours and hours and hours to, to make sure the uniformity, especially, I was really picky about the uniformity. I wanted to look, uh, I wanted to look professional. And, uh, you know, to God be the glory, you know, many of these notebooks have been sold around the country. And people are using them to, to get it closer to God. But, that's, but that's, a, that's, that's the fire that a, a, a person has you know, when they, they want to do that first class job. And, and it's not for their sake. It's, 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 just, it's just that fire within them. They want to do it for the Lord's sake. And so you know, they can be trusted, trusted to work alone. They'll actually work. Number 20, they're high flyers. They're high flyers. They are high flyers. They do not get easily discouraged or distracted. Their mind does not get clouded up with all the storms of life. They stay on the alert and are ready for any storms that may come. Storms do come into their life, but they fly above them, not through or around them. Remember the swans, how do they fly? They fly above the storms. That's what uh, 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 Pastor Hiles, he, he, whenever he would uh, teach in, 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 in college or uh, you know, preach, he was like, Fly, live above the clouds. Yeah. Live above the clouds. Don't, don't live under the doom and gloom and the gray, cloudy. No, live above the clouds. And uh, if you've ever flown, flown on a plane on a cloudy day and then you break the clouds, what a beauty it is. The bubbly, bubbly, billowy clouds. And that's how we ought to live. They fly above the clouds. Number 21, they're not scared of high mountains. They are not scared of high mountains. Oh, my goodness, this is a high mountain to climb. A, a person with initiative is not scared of high mountains because why? They do not climb the high mountains. They fly over them. They don't climb, they don't climb the high mountains. You know, they, like, like uh, what, uh, what did Maria's uh, 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 mother, Teresa, Tell her, climb every mountain. No, pff, I'm going to fly over it. Forget climbing every mountain. They fly over them. Number 22, are remembered. People with initiative are remembered because they make the gutsy moves and calculated risks. 
They, they pioneer. Who pioneered the, uh, fr from the East Coast inland and develop a, a, a territory called Kentucky? Who was his name? What was his name? Daniel Boone. He was a pioneer. He went out there. He's like, I, let, let's go get it done. Yeah. All right? Daniel Boone was a man, a big man. <laughs> All right, number one, people without initiative. People without initiative. This is something that we should teach our young people, teach our, teach our kids, grandkids. People without initiative are destined for a life of poverty. They do not possess both ingredients of recognizing and doing. Most people can do the recognizing, but they stop when it comes to the doing. Why is that? Because they are lazy and slothful. They're just lazy. Number two, when you lack initiative, you're announcing to the whole world, the young people, when you lack initiative, you're announcing to the whole world, this could go for some adults that you know, we cross paths with. Number, letter A, I am still a child. I have... I am still a child. You, they, you, you're also saying, let her be, I have not grown up yet. And let her see, I lack character. When you lack initiative, that's what you're saying to the whole world. I'm still a child. I've not grown up yet. I lack character. Number three, other leaders. In other words, other people with initiative. Other leaders can spot someone without initiative in a heartbeat. When they're looking for someone to complete a job, which usually involves a promotion and means a pay raise because of more responsibility, they pass over the people that have to be managed and select the one that can manage himself, the one who will produce when no one else is watching. Other people with initiative, they can spot when somebody doesn't have it, but then they can also spot when somebody does have it. And they're like, hey, I don't have to babysit that guy. Their heart's involved. That's, that's why I, I loved, uh, you know, when I worked in college at, at McDonald's, I worked back in the kitchen, and I worked with my, my brother-in-law, uh, Daniel Woods. We call him Uncle Woody. Uh, Woods. Um, but uh, but uh, we would work in the, kitchen, in the kitchen together, and we would be on the assembly table. And this was before they had the, um, the racks of the yellow trays. If you look past the front line of the, kit, of the McDonald's kitchen, you'll see that it's done. That, that came in whenever I was in college. But we were, we were with the old way, and uh, there was, there was a one lunch hour that as a kitchen, we, we, were, we, were, we worked so well as a team, we did over $1,000 in sales in one hour. And, and that's a hard thing to do. That's a tough thing to do. I mean, you are just, everybody's in tune. Everybody's in tune. Everybody's just, li you're li using your ears, you're using your eyes, you, every, every part of your being is totally engrossed in the whole system and you're flowing with it because you have to flow, you have to work as a team. And, and but, but if, if you're a leader with, and you have, if you're a leader, you know that it takes, to be a leader, it, it takes some gumption. You got to have some fire. You got to have some initiative. And then they see somebody else with that, and they're like, wow, my, hey, come join me. That would be great. Number four, each swan flying behind you is benefiting from the updraft that you are creating. You are breaking the air for them. How much updraft? Are you creating for those following you? You had better get flapping. Whether we like it or not, we're all a leader in some way, shape, or form. Well, I don't, I don't have any responsibility. I don't. It could be leader in testimony. It could, it could be, you know, a, a variety of other things. But every each swan flying behind you is benefiting from your updraft. Be a pioneer. Show some initiative. Number five, initiative comes from the very fibers of a person's character. It is their person, their heartbeat, and who they really are. Like I said before, there's a fire in their bones that moves them to have a servant's heart. They can't just sit there and while work is being done around them. They can't just sit there and, and just watch it happen. It's just, it's just like something cringes inside. It's like, I've got to help. I've got to get up and help. 
I've got to, I've got to, you know, help. It's just, it's just a part of their, their being. And, you know, God's children, we need to, we need to be the ones with initiative. We need to be the ones who are the pioneers uh, in, in a variety of areas. It, I mean, we're, we're talking a lot about work, but it could also be in, in voicing the truth. And, and, you know, we recognize, hey, the, you know, there, truth needs to be spoken. Hey, let's, let's step out. And sometimes, sometimes it's easier to, sometimes it's, it's less confrontational to, to jump in there and help somebody with work, and it's more confrontational to jump in there and say something that is going against the flow. But initiative is necessary in both ways. And so let's be Christians who are bold and who have that servant's heart, who want to help others and, and, uh, and want to exhibit the, uh, the, the example of Jesus Christ. Just remember that he authored our salvation, and then he stepped in there and did it. He didn't just say, hey, you know, here's a plan, but let's send an angel. No, he said, I'll do it. I'll jump in there and get her done. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you, Lord, for this chance that you've given us to come together. I ask that you please, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to be the, the kind of Christian, Lord, that would be like a Abigail or a Peter or like Jesus Christ or like David who, when they, when they see a, a job that needs to be done, they jump in there and do it. They don't, they don't wait for everybody else to, anybody else to jump first or they see that something needs to be said or they see that, that uh, something needs to be spoken of. They, they stand up and, they, and they're bold and they, they, they just put their life in your hands and they trust you. And I pray, Lord, that you please help us. Give us that boldness. Give us that, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that, that servant's heart that is so necessary, Lord. We want to lift up Jesus. We want to do it for his honor and glory. We want, don't want to do it for pride's sake. Pray that you please help us, Lord, as your as your people, as your children. Help us, Lord, to uh, to strive to emulate this character quality of initiative, Lord. Initiative, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Miss Melissa will play a hymn of invitation. I encourage you to come and use the altar and ask the Lord just to to help you to recognize those areas where something needs to be done, but then give you the give you the the, the power to to pioneer the way and lead the way and, and get the job done when the job needs to be done. Let's pray.
turn over hymn books and go to number 397 and we'll sing the first and last verse of number 397, 397, little as much when God is in it. In the harvest still now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark the voice of God is calling to the harvest calling you. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. When the conflict here is ended and our race on earth is run, He will say to all the faithful, Welcome home, my child, well done. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm praying down here with my kids and then tonight with Brother Tony, uh, the Lord will bring other examples to mind. And I was, as we were praying, I was thinking the Lord brought to mind the Good Samaritan. Good Samaritan. You know, he recognized, you know, the, the Levite and the priest, they recognized what needed to be done. Kept on walking. But the Good Samaritan, he recognized and he did. And guess who's remembered for good? People with initiative are remembered. Because when the father sees a person with initiative, it reminds him of his son, Jesus. And that's so endearing to his heart. That looked just like Jesus. You did exactly what Jesus did. So may we, may we have that, may we have that courage. We may be able to recognize something that needs to be done, but don't disqualify yourself. If the Lord has prompted you, if the Lord has prompted you and brought it to your attention, you may say, well, I'm not qualified. Well, what did they say about, was it Lydia? She hath done what she could. What about that? The widow, everybody's throwing in all their offerings, and what did she, what did she put in? Don't, you could at least do two mites worth of effort. Something. This is what I can do, Lord. I give it to you. Don't be discouraged. Let's, let's, be, uh, let's make God, let's please our Heavenly Father. So let's be children of initiative. And uh, see a task that needs to be done, jump in there. I'll, I'll do what I can. I'll do what I can. I can't possibly fix the whole problem, but I can do what I can. And I can put my two mites in. I can, you know, give it to the Lord. Amen. Well, let's, let's bow for prayer. Thanks so much for your faithfulness. And, and those who are tuning in, we sure do miss you. And can't wait to see everybody back together again. But uh, let's uh, bow for prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Preacher, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?